Hey, what's up, Ant lovers? Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel and another Ant video. Today, I wanted to show you guys some of the ants that we've been testing our brand new hybrid nests on and how they moved in and settled into their new home. Hope you enjoy the video. So let's start with this Odontomachus colony. This is just a beginning colony, and that there is the queen and four workers. Now this species is interesting because they are a semi-claustral species, so during this initial founding stage of the colony, the queen must forage, um, you know, to feed herself and to feed her young. The cool thing about this species is they're known as trap jaw ants, and they're called that because they can really spread their mandibles at 180 degrees, and shut it with incredible speeds. They've got little tiny hairs that trigger the trap to shut, um, and it's really cool. They can capture some really hard to catch prey, and they can even jump using this super fast mandible shutting action. Now this colony is rather young. I probably wouldn't have moved them into a hybrid nest this early in any normal circumstance, but we did want to test our hybrid nest on a young Odontomachus colony. So we decided to move them into the Formica version of our hybrid nest. And of course, to keep them comfortable, we leave them in the dark. Now moving on to this next species, super, super exciting guys. I'd like to introduce to you the ants from the genus known as Diacama. These ants came into my possession from a friend of mine, a curator from the National Museum of the Philippines here in Manila. And this is a huge and very unique ant. These ants are quite large. They're just under two centimeters long, but their leg span is huge. I would say about three centimeters. Now these ants were collected from the mountains. So they're originally from a cooler environment. And so they do really well in an air conditioned room, which was really neat and very different for ants in the Philippines. Now these ants are super unique because they have what are called gamma gates. They're essentially rule breakers in the ant world because they don't have a set queen. You know how in normal colonies you have a queen that's born a queen, um, she leaves her family and has a nuptial flight, mates with a male, and starts her own colony. Well, the life cycle of Diacama is very different. In Diacama, the workers can actually elect a queen. So get this, they can choose among them who will be the reproductive queen. And this queen will usually be the oldest of the colony, and she'll also be the most aggressive and most dominant. Now, how does mating work? Well, apparently the diacama males are born and they kind of leave the nest and are attracted to other colonies of diacama by way of the queen or gamma gate releasing a pheromone. And once the males come, these females, the workers and the queen kind of drag the male into the nest where he then mates with the queen inside the nest. It's really such a unique life cycle for an ant. Now, if you think that's weird, well, check out this. In some species of the genus Diacama, the reproductive queens or gamma gates have these organs on their thorax, which kind of resemble vestigial wings called gemmae. Now, apparently when these ants have this gemmae or gemmae, not sure how it's pronounced, um, the ants are capable of laying fertile eggs. And when these gemmae are removed, it removes that ability to lay fertile eggs. And from my understanding, the gamma gate makes sure that the other workers don't have these organs. So she will actually remove and mutilate younger workers right when they emerge from their cocoon. And it's strange because the other workers also help her do this. So in effect, as long as that queen is around, she tries to make sure that the other workers don't also turn into queens or gamma gates, I should say, through this continual process of mutilation of her sisters. Now, I was told this species doesn't have the gemmae and they can choose among them who can be the gamma gate. Now, I'm not sure if any of these workers is the colony gamma gate, but I'm hoping so. So my hope is that they'll soon choose amongst them a gamma gate to start laying eggs. I decided to put them in our Camponotus version of our hybrid nest and I found that the rotting log that they were in was kind of on the moist side and our Camponotus version of the hybrid nest creates a sort of 30 to 40 percent humidity level so what I do now is I hydrate the nest every day by placing water in the wells just to keep the humidity up and so far so good. 
Now, these ants are also known for a behavioral phenomenon known as tandem running, where they apparently run in these long lines, where there's an ant in front and the ants behind are kind of connected by way of their antennae that are kind of touching the waist area of the ant in front of them. And I was lucky enough to film this behavior here, where you can see two ants running together in tandem. Now, speaking with my friend Perry Buenavente, the curator from the National Museum of the Philippines, he had mentioned he hadn't seen tandem running in real life. So I was extra excited that we had captured the behavior here on film, even if it was just two members tandem running. Now, as you can see, it didn't take these diacama ants very long to find the nest. It was perhaps maybe about five to 10 minutes before one of the ants discovered the favorable conditions inside this hybrid nest and it began telling the others. Now the sting from these girls I hear is pretty painful. They are an extremely aggressive ant. And as you can see here, they're attacking this live cockroach nymph that I put in there for them. And they eat it together, communally. To me, they really seem like a pack of wolves. There's something about them that's very individual. They each kind of have an individual awareness, which I find a little bit different. Of course, for the sake of you North American and European and temperate region ant keepers, we are testing our hybrid nests on Pogonomermex, as you can see here. These Pogonomermex californicus colonies are settling in to their hybrid nests now. As you can see, they're storing some seeds. And this here is a Formica colony kept in a Campanotis version of our hybrid nest. Now, if you watched our last video on the hybrid nests, you'll see that we mentioned that you're allowed to keep any ants in any of the versions of the hybrid nests, as long as the tunnels and the corridors are of appropriate size, which is the case here. Of course, you're totally free to add whatever substrate you want within the nest and within the hydration chamber. So if you haven't already, be sure to check out our last video on hybrid nests and how they work. A lot of you guys have been writing to me asking when these hybrid nests will be available, and we are aiming to release these one-of-a-kind high-tech farmicariums sometime in May. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to tune in again for our next ant video. It's Ant Love Forever. This is Ant Canada signing out. Hey, what's up guys? Thanks so much for watching my videos. It really means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please subscribe to my videos by hitting that subscribe button. And also don't forget to check out our latest video on our new hybrid nests that will be hitting antscanada.com very soon. And don't forget to check out our Solenopsis Geminata colony. Thanks so much guys, it's ant love forever.